and thank you for joining this webinar about clinically relevant metrics on non-invasive prenatal testing. My name is Patricia Tanasia, and I will be reviewing Illumina's publication, Non-Invasive Prenatal Testing in the General Obstetric Population, Clinical Performance and Counseling Considerations in Over 85,000 Cases. This paper is available online from the journal Prenatal Diagnosis and is in the February 2016 print edition of the journal. We'd like to take some time today to go through the key points of this important paper. There has been exponential growth in the uptake of non-invasive prenatal testing since initial clinical validation studies demonstrated that whole genome massively parallel sequencing of cell-free DNA can detect fetal aneuploidy with high accuracy. Medical societies with published policy statements about the use of MIPT include a recommendation for ongoing reporting of clinically relevant metrics such as test performance, failure rates, and turnaround time. Such et al. published the initial clinical experience of the Illumina Clinical Laboratory from nearly 6,000 high-risk pregnancies, and Bianchi et al. published Illumina's clinical experience with sex chromosome analysis. Both studies indicated that clinical cell-free DNA testing operates well within the performance parameters established in prior validation studies. Additionally, other clinical laboratories and individual clinics have published their clinical experience with cell-free DNA testing. These publications help to monitor individual clinical laboratory metrics and point out emerging trends and challenges within the broader field of non-invasive prenatal testing. The focus of more recent NIPT-related publications has shifted towards providing clinicians with pre- and post-test counseling tools. Thus, this study had two main goals. First, determine updated performance metrics and then develop a positive predictive value counseling tool that links NIPT clinical performance to an a priori risk determined by maternal age. Second, evaluate whether the clinical population demographics have changed since test introduction. This study was a retrospective analysis of data prospectively collected or generated on consecutive clinical samples submitted for the verified prenatal aneuploidy screening test at the CAF accredited and CLIA certified Illumina Laboratory in Redwood City, California. This test screens for certain fetal aneuploidies by analyzing cell-free DNA by a massively parallel sequence. This study cohort included all singleton pregnancy clinical samples tested for autosomal trisomies of chromosomes 21, 13, and 18, subsequent to those previously published. Samples reported as a single autosomal monosomy or multiple detected aneuploidies, twin samples, and samples with sex chromosome aneuploidies were excluded from the study and have been published or submitted for publication separately. An active follow-up process was utilized to collect outcome information for cases with aneuploidy detected and aneuploidy suspected results for trisomies 21, 18, or 13, as well as for technical cancellation. Voluntary reporting of any discordant case, including false negatives, was encouraged. Demographic and result data were compared between the current study population and our initial clinical experience, and statistical analyses for significance were employed. A total of 86,658 samples meeting inclusion criteria were sessioned during the study period. Samples were received from across the United States and 38 different countries. Let's take a look at some of the results and how they compared to our initial clinical population. First, there has been a shift in test timing, with testing now predominantly performed in the first trimester as compared with the second and third trimesters as shown here. This is a significant change with a p-value of less than 0 .0001. The initial NIPT clinical offering was often used as a second-tier screening option, resulting in a significant proportion of second trimester samples as shown. Since we wanted to evaluate whether the clinical population opting for NIPT has changed since its introduction, this shows that there has been a shift towards first trimester use, consistent with greater utilization of non-invasive prenatal testing as an earlier first-year aneuploidy screen. Average maternal age was not significantly different between the two study cohorts evaluated here, p-value equals 0.053. Here, we show that process improvements have led to a 30% reduction in time to results, now 3.3 business days from receipt of sample to reporting, p-value less than 0 
This is particularly impressive in the face of increasing sample volumes in the laboratory. Additionally, we show an 86% reduction of the technical cancellation rate from 0.7% to 0.1% with the implementation of test improvements. Importantly, this technical cancellation rate is far below those reported by other NIPT laboratories, which range from 1.9 to 7.7%. All references are noted and included in the paper. Further, clinical follow-up of this small technical cancellation group revealed no aneuploidies for chromosomes 13, 18, or 21 within the cases that reported back outcomes to the laboratory, which was 52 out of 101, or 51.5%. This contrasts with two recent studies from other laboratories that suggested aneuploidy cases are overrepresented in technical cancellation. These conflicting findings may reflect differences in assay design, chemistry, and or bioinformatics analysis methods between whole genome sequencing approaches and targeted sequencing approaches. In a clinical setting, canceled tests generally, generally lead to an inconvenient second blood draw appointment, increased turnaround times, and heightened patient anxiety. Thus, with the Lumina's NIPT, the vast majority of patients receive results, and based on the above data, a cancellation does not elevate a patient's a priori risk for fetal aneuploidy. Results of the testing are shown in Table 2 of the paper. Of 2,142 positive results, the majority were aneuploidy detected. The overall incidence of positive cases, including both aneuploidy detected and aneuploidy suspected, has declined from 6.9% in the Flesch et al. cohort to 2.5% in this study. This reflects a significant reduction in the prevalence of aneuploidy detected cases from 4.0% to 2.2%, and a significant reduction in the prevalence of aneuploidy suspected cases from 2.8% to 0.3%, p-values of less than 0 0.0001. This significant decrease in the overall prevalence of positive cases is attributed to a combination of two factors. First, the lower, lower overall prevalence suggests changing indications, with more patients without clearly defined high-risk indications choosing NIPT. Indications from the test requisition form suggest that the current study had a higher proportion of low-risk patients, including patients with milder or no ultrasound findings compared to the study by Fletch et al. Unfortunately, as indications on the test requisition form are not completed by all providers, we were unable to definitely say what the different risks in the two populations are. Second, advances in sequencing chemistry and the analysis algorithm have facilitated a greater refinement of the borderline zone between no aneuploidy detected and aneuploidy detected, reducing the aneuploidy suspected results. This improvement is of significant clinical value. Interestingly, no shift in prevalence was noted for trisomy 13, which could be due to the relatively low overall incidence of trisomy 13, even in high-risk populations. In order to determine test performance statistics, outcomes were requested for all aneuploidy detected and aneuploidy suspected cases. Outcomes were received for 55.9% of abnormal cases. Of the 1,197 responses received, 1,094, or 91.4%, provided informative outcome information, like a carrier type or pregnancy loss. An additional 103 responded but had no informative outcome information. The outcomes are further broken down in the paper. For the purposes of this presentation, it is important to note that calculations are based on available outcomes only. One of the biggest challenges surrounding non-invasive prenatal testing has been understanding test performance statistics and how to apply them to specific patient populations, particularly with the increasing adoption of NIPT in women with a lower a priori risk. As a result, there has been a shift in recent studies to reporting predictive values because predictive values can be more useful when counseling patients. Here is a summary slide of the assay metrics we evaluated for the clinical population. First, non-invasive prenatal testing results as compared to clinical outcomes. Next, assay performance characteristics, including sensitivity and specificity. And lastly, predictive values. The basic calculations are shown here. Both the paper and the online supplement delve into the specific calculations in greater detail. 
As I mentioned on the previous slide, predictive values are of particular interest to clinicians because they can be used in pre- and post-test counseling. Prevalence and assay specificity are both correlated with predictive values. Positive predictive values increase with disease prevalence and are highly dependent on specificity. Observed performance statistics were derived based on available outcome data, with the cohort size adjusted for the proportion of positive cases with confirmed outcomes. These cohort adjustment calculations are detailed in Supplement 1. Because complete outcomes were not available, sensitivity and specificity ranges were estimated by assuming that positive samples lacking outcomes were all concordant for the upper limit or all discordant for the lower limit. For these calculations, samples that were reported as no aneuploidy detected by NIPT and that had no further communication regarding discordant outcomes were considered to be true negative. This data showed that the test performance is as good as or better than in validation sets. This is important because validation studies are performed in controlled set of patients. For example, they exclude known mosaic samples and often have higher gestational ages. The fact that observed sensitivities and specificities from this cohort are in line with validation studies support that non-invasive prenatal testing has maintained high levels of accuracy in a clinical setting. However, while NIPT has higher sensitivities and specificities, it is important to recognize that false positive and false negative can occur. As such, all positive results should be confirmed by diagnostic testing. For aneuploidy detected cases in this cohort, the overall observed frequency of putative false positives was 0.1%, a small reduction compared with our initial clinical experience, which showed 0.2%. This study cohort had a reported overall false negative frequency of 0.02%, which is comparable to other published reported false negative frequencies, which range from 0.01 to 0.06%. If false negative results are based on cases that were self-reported to the laboratory only, the true false negative value may be higher. It is also important to keep in mind that there is likely a bias in reporting, with the laboratory more likely to get information on discordant outcomes than concordant outcomes. Irreversible clinical decisions should not be made based on screening results alone. For patients with discordance, clinicians should consider potential biological etiology like placental or fetal mosaicism, or maternal medical conditions. And depending on the individual clinical picture, consider whether further clinical follow-up is warranted. False negative cases are discussed in more detail in the supplement, and demographic characteristics for false negatives were similar to the overall cohort. The observed positive predictive values from this study were derived based on cases with cytogenetic confirmation only. The observed per-chromosome positive predictive values for aneuploidy detected and aneuploidy suspected cases together ranged from 41.0 to 85.5%. The observed per-chromosome positive predictive values for aneuploidy detected cases only ranged from 50 to 92.8% and are shown in Table 4 of the paper. These are consistent with other published non-invasive prenatal testing positive predictive values. The lower PPVs for chromosomes 13 and 18 were expected, as trisomy 18 and 13 have a lower incidence than trisomy 21, and more cases of fetal and placental mosaicism have been reported for chromosomes 13 and 18. Regardless of whether you focus on the observed positive predictive values for aneuploidy detected cases only, or for the combination of aneuploidy detected and suspected cases in our cohort, the positive predictive values presented for the common aneuploidies are significantly better than those for any serum screening options. Integrated screening has the best sensitivity and specificity and has a positive predictive value of only 20.7% for trisomy 21. This is based on a sensitivity of 94%, a specificity of 95%, and an estimated prevalence of trisomy 21 of 1 in 73 as calculated from this clinical cohort. While there has been a push from professional societies to move to reporting positive predictive values on NIPT reports delivered to patients, this has not yet been adopted. The primary reason is likely in part because of the dependency of positive predictive values on an a priori risk, which makes reporting a personalized PPV difficult. 
A patient's a priori risk depends on a combination of variables, including maternal age, gestational age, family history, and the presence of other high-risk indications like ultrasound findings or positive serum screen results. Clinicians planning to communicate PPVs to their patients will need to take into consideration their patient's individual clinical picture and will also require an understanding of impact of prevalence on positive predictive value. Thus, we developed the maternal age-related chart for positive predictive values. For women undergoing non-invasive prenatal testing as a first-tier screen, maternal age is the primary factor determining a priori risk. By combining the observed sensitivities and specificities determined here with published estimates of incidence at 10 weeks of gestation, we projected positive predictive values for trisomy 21, trisomy 18, and trisomy 13 at five-year maternal age in intervals, demonstrating that later maternal ages have higher PPVs because of the higher incidence of fetal aneuploidy. While this chart can be used by clinicians as a guide to a patient's PPV based on maternal age alone, when counseling patients, clinical consideration should be given to the presence of other indications like ultrasound findings. They may elevate a patient's a priori risk and therefore elevate the PPV over that determined by maternal age alone. Women considered to be low risk with no known high risk indications should be counseled that they will have a lower positive predictive value. Although the positive predictive value for low risk women is lower than for high risk women, again, it is important for clinicians to understand that the PPV for NIPT is higher than with any traditional pregnancy screening options regardless of maternal age or a priori risk. We recommend that this PPV tool be used in clinical practice to better inform patients of their risk. However, diagnostic invasive testing is always recommended for confirmation of high-risk non-invasive prenatal test results. It is also important for clinicians to note that PPVs vary based on the NAPT assay. So the positive predictive value tool outlined in this study is specific to the verify non-invasive prenatal test only. In summary, this clinical population has demonstrated a significant shift in earlier testing and potential enrichment of lower risk women in the population affecting test positive rates. Additionally, this study demonstrated improvements in three key performance metrics, time to result, cancellation rates, and borderline result classification. A PVV chart for clinicians was developed based on APA metrics from this population. As more average risk studies are published and as NIPT expands to include additional chromosomes and microdeletion analyses, continued updates on clinical laboratory experience will remain necessary to ensure that patients have appropriate resources when facing decisions regarding diagnostic invasive prenatal tests. These resources include appropriate counseling regarding test performance statistics and population statistics. When interpreting positive predictive values, it is important for clinicians to understand that positive predictive values change with aneuploidy incidence. So as the population incidence decreases, positive predictive values will as well. Patients receiving an aneuploidy detected or suspected result via non-invasive prenatal test should receive post-test counseling to assess their individual clinical pictures and be offered standard confirmatory diagnostic testing. Thank you for joining us today.